Good enough to do it, everybody. This is NCP. In the continuing series, now we're going to get into serious stuff on the Teowaki Pie. So, for now, we're going to use this one today as a, um, a remote security DVR system. I'm going to be using the original Pi because I'm going to put it away and just, you know, set it up and put it in my storage area and let it Wi-Fi through. But, that's not here now, so I'm going to replace the camera one. But still, what we're going to do is take the original Raspberry Pi, version 1. We're going to go to this link, which I'll put in the, the, the description. This is called Motion Eye OS. Our Motion Eyes, our Motion Eye Operating System. This is what we're going to run. And basically, we're going to burn this image. If you go back to my other video on how to burn images. First, we're going to download it for your device. As you see, there's a lot of different devices we can actually do this on. Uh, in our case, we're going to use the Rad Raspberry Pi, the uh, original one, or B, but still the first generation. And we're going to download it, the latest version. So that's downloading now. Then we're going to burn that to an SD card, and I'll come back once I put it in the physical Raspberry Pi. Now. Last time I messed with this, we had to physically connect the Raspberry Pi to the um, network for the initial setup. So we'll do that and then go to the right URL or the right uh, IP address for it. But we'll get there. It's going to take a while for this thing to download uh, the current version. So, like I said, use this uh, this link here to the original creator's webpage and you'll get the current version. And also, it's good for other boards too, but we're doing this one right now. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 2 is so much faster. I've been working with it. So, this is the old one. It's just going to be as a DVR. Um, I think it's going to have more power than my actual DVR system. So, And I believe we can just keep adding cameras. I don't know what the limit is, but I'm going to be using webcams. <clears throat> but you can use remote cams. If anything, goes USB. And um, based on your power supply, you may need to run it through a hub to uh, give enough power to the cameras. But... For right now, I know at least one HD camera works. So, HD webcam is pretty cheap. So, there we go. But let me wait till this thing's done, and then I'll burn it to an image, as per my other video on burning images. And then we'll we'll get on with it. I'll come back when I get ready. So, it's going to start off by formatting a partition. This is where it starts off. Uh, just put the card in. So we're going to let it run through all the configuration. should take about two minutes to set up. And once we get to the interface, we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to use, I've got a, a physical cable plugged into it. And then I'll look at my router and see where it's at. But once the interface comes up, I'll get to that and I'll be right back. Alright everybody, here it is. Def installed this default level. The password when you log in is admin with our uh, the username with no password i can't get back to it but <laughs> so i've got it setting up as you see over there i've got it set up as standalone unit just running the wi-fi and running the um the whatchamacallit the uh, power supply from the phone charger one amp the amount of cameras you have is limited by the power of the pi this is a base system not overclocked uh it's a raspberry pi one you don't want to have too many cameras so that you can't support them from the USB for power supply. If you want to run too many of them, you're going to need to add a hub, a powered hub. And go on, I've ran three successfully webcams on this, but the other ones are crap cams. So I just got this one on. So if you go, if you go down to network, you have to set up Wi-Fi by putting in your own Wi-Fi name and network key. It'll be blank. You have to set this up originally from the from a Category 5 or Ethernet cable. Uh, usually when you mouse over things, they will give you the information. Uh, the little question marks, they don't seem to do it when I'm recording the screen. I don't know why. Probably because it's flashing. Anyway, so if you go down here to services, you can have it do all sorts of things for you. Yeah. And I'll, I'll do all this. This is all the default. Go to the, the author's website and get the latest version. And there's all kinds of documentation on this, but this is the default one. Um, <clears throat> expert settings. You go down, look at that. If it you know loses connection, it'll send you emails or whatever. 
all this stuff can be configured there and how to get to the real access. I'm looking at the local one right now. I'm going to set this up in my storage area and just leave it and use a local network there that I have access to. So, a local Wi Fi. And like I said, you can do all this other stuff here. Real simple, go through it. <coughs> Excuse me. And I redid that one. So, right now you can type camera, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to leave it. You can have the brightness. If your camera doesn't have these settings, it can do it for you. I've got it down low for the streaming for this video. Because it's streaming constantly, not just taking snapshots. But you can turn it up to whatever your camera supports. In this case, uh, 16, 1600. I'll run it right now at 320. Just leave that alone. You can rotate the video so it sets your camera however you want. The lower the frame rate you have, the better it'll run. In this case, like I said, Raspberry Pi, number one, isn't all that powerful. So I have it down low to keep it less uh, taxing on the CPU. Now, depending on how many cameras you have, that's going to add up your frame rate. So, um, Extra motion options, that's just command lines. I don't know a lot about that right now, to be honest. Sorry. Uh, file storage. Now, I think, when I use anything, I want to say B-Blood, but I'm not sure. wanted it with a, a, like an external hard drive. Now, right now, I have it on thumb drive over there. And you can have it set to your custom path on the chip. Or if you have a big 32 gig card or a 64 gig card or whatever you want to put in there, it's fine. Um, I'm going to do set this one up on a network share. And I'll have it do both. But I'll have a network share. I'll have it dump my files to the cloud server. So if I'm not there, you know, I'll see what's going on. And I've used 1% of 7 gigs or 14 gigs. So, but you can have it upload your media files, that's your video and stuff to your cloud service, or uh, webhook is like basically have the web page go to another page and flash so it shows you. Run commands, you know, set off your alarms. If you're going to like use your general purpose input output pins on your Raspberry Pi, you can have it run to physical alarms, or you could have it trigger like a man trap and like lock all the doors if you have servos on them or something. Uh, just, just whatever you want to set it for. Text overlay is basically your camera and what it is, and timestamp, and whatever you want on there. Video streaming is the streaming rate. If you want to watch it live streaming, you can set up your rate and speed for that. Again, <clears throat> the, more, uh, the, more, the more you have this, the more power you have it set at, the harder it's going to be on the Raspberry Pi. And there are other options besides Raspberry Pi. It's like banana and... Banana Pie and Adreno and the author has made this available for several types of uh, one one chip computer boards so whatever it works best for you I'm running this on a Raspberry Pi 1 which is pretty much disposable now I'm, I like to run on a Pi 0 actually that's like a $5 DVR um, it'll take pictures that's what I'm kind of having to do because I don't need it running when it's closed and no one's there so I'll just have to take pictures every so often high quality and I'll have it preserved forever because it's going to be going to my cloud. The movies is the streaming, uh, the movie quality. So we're going to have the high quality right now. It's a 25% of the potential. Right here, I'll tell you the information on that. But like I said, it doesn't work right now. When I'm when I'm capturing video, the, the, the highlighted notes doesn't show up for some reason. But on yours, it will when you get it. So you have it run for so long. Have it saved for like however, you know. Just like a regular DVR, how it'll cycle like a one month or whenever, whatever you want to set it to. Motion detection is where we come into the the important settings. Um, when things change, it'll um, it'll go. When the noise detection is good, if you have a long multiple, let's say you want to run a long like I don't know 30 meters of USB cameras. Well, at about five meters or so, you're gonna need to put another hub in. And all these things will create a little bit of noise as they go. So you want to turn the noise off. The light switch detection is what I'm mostly going to be using. So when you open up the storage, the light comes in or someone turns on lights in there. And then it'll set my, my system off to record and everything. So not so much motion. Because the top has got like a little, uh, like a wind barrier up there on top inside. So, so moisture doesn't build up out here in North Carolina. So 
the it, it might see the the top of it ruffle a bit as it goes by the foam or the uh, I don't know the covering on the tin roof. There's like a padding there, insulation. So I don't want that setting it up. So we're gonna go by the light detection and then uh, uh, notifications. You can have it send you an email, do the webhook, run a command. Didn't we ever go over that? I don't know. And then uh, work schedule, you can have it whatever days of the week you want to run on. So, and then if you want motion detection on certain days, you know, or when outside, you know, outside your work schedule. But that's it. Um, it's really nice, simple system. And you can have as many as you want. Like I said, this is good because you can monitor, like, an... I don't know, a parent across country if you need to watch your parent. Um, terrible invasion of privacy, but, you know, make sure they're okay with it. You know, if you have a baby monitor that you can monitor, or, you know, we'll have one set up here to monitor the pets. You know, if we're out of town or something and I need to watch for that day or something, I need to know. I'll put I'll put up, up every room everywhere the pet can go, and I'll have all the cameras set up, you know, local network, and I'll, I'll watch the pets and make sure everything's okay with sound and everything. So, there you go. Stone Can Prepper. Please rate subscribe. This is your $5 to $30 DVR. Disposable DVRs. Made from old old webcams I don't use anymore. I suppose you can hook any type of USB camera up to it at all. Or any type of camera hub. Or any, anything, you know. All the USB. Wi-Fi cameras. Whatever. You know, it's a five to thirty dollar DVR, depending if you're on a Raspberry Pi Zero, or a Raspberry Pi Two, or Raspberry Pi, or Banana Pi, or any of that stuff. Any version. Uh, the author has a lot of them, so take a look and look at the downloads, and always get the latest version. You can check for updates as well. But like I said, my things aren't working here. But all right, that's it. If you have any questions, post below. Uh, please rate, subscribe, have a great day, everybody. Thanks. Don't forget to pepper out.